Hello, good afternoon, and warm welcome to Joy Newsroom with me, Pius Kojubaka. Coming up in our headlines, Chairman of the National Democratic Congress, John Sinesiri Ketia, describes the NDC's policies going into the 2024 election as superior to that of the NPP. So if you are implementing 24-hour economy, and some of the huge energy con consumers like uh, uh, the steel mills, that use a lot of electricity. We yeah, encourage yeah. them to be working during the, the off-peak periods. Yeah. By giving them cheap power, which could have gone waste anyway. Anyway, yeah. You are introducing efficiency into the utilization of your energy resources as well. Mm -hmm. We have details as he calls on Ghanaians to embrace its candidate's 24-hour economy proposal. Also in this bulletin, Speaker of Parliament begins crackdown on lateness by MPs to parliamentary citizens vowing to lock doors of the chamber at 10 a.m. Nowhere in any parliament in the world will the Speaker always go and sit and wait for members of parliament to come in. It doesn't happen anywhere in the world. At 10 a.m., who you say 10 in the phone, the doors will be locked. Plus, Deputy Majority Leader and MP for Ifutu asks constituents to stand by him against claims he has masterminded the sale of forest lands in the constituency for mining. We have details of these, plus many others lined up for you. Please stay. We are your hope of independent, fearless, and credible journalism. Let's now settle for the details. And Chairman of the National Democratic Congress, John Sinesidu Nkitia, has described the NDC's policies going into the 2024 elections as superior to that of the NPP. John Sinesidu Nkitia explained why every Ghanaian must buy into his proposed 24-hour economy, says it will put the country at par with its compatriots, as well as boost industries which will, in turn, transform the economy. He was speaking in a yet-to-be-heard interview on PM, PM Personality Profile. Our opponents are just blowing hot air because uh, that policy appears to have that policy appears to have taken them by storm, and so their reaction suggests that uh, they are this. Uh, this is not a complicated policy to adopt or implement at all. See, industries in Europe and many other places operate 24 hours. True. Sure. And we are operating eight hours. And we are supposed to produce things and compete with somebody who is utilizing his infrastructure, everything, for 24 hours. Yeah. So, there is, from the beginning, a disconnect that makes us uncompetitive. If we just look at the surface like that, you understand? So what we are saying is that the, there is already some infrastructure that is being underutilized mm -hmm. or badly utilized. Mm -hmm. Let's take our uh, energy infrastructure, for instance. You see that Ghana is one place where you have uh, so much variance between a low period of energy consumption and peak period of energy consumption okay. within any day. Mm -hmm. There are times when there is peak period, that's for the purpose of argument take maybe a scale of zero to hundred. There are times you see that energy consumption in some parts of the day may come to 10%. 10 there are other times, peak periods, when you see that the energy consumption has shot up to 90%. 
through that variation exists in how we consume our electricity. Mm -hmm. Now, if you get into another economy where they are running 24-hour shift, you see that this variation has been evened out. So instead of maybe varying from 10% to 90%, you have a variation of around 50%. Mm -hmm. So it may come down to 40, it may go down to 60. Yep. And then that is how the electricity will be consumed. Mm -hmm. Now take these two scenarios and see how much it, it costs to fix the infrastructure for electricity uh, distribution. You don't want, you want 24 hour supply of electricity. So you don't want a, a scenario where during the peak period there is overload and your system will shut down. Shut down, yeah. Okay. So in putting, in laying the infrastructure, you must lay, you must lay it in such a way that it can capture the peak period and you will still have no problems. Mm -hmm. So from that standpoint alone, if you are able, as a matter of policy, to encourage some of the consumers to offload their consumption during peak period yeah. to the, the low period of 10, mm -hmm. and you are able to push that one up, yeah. you bring down the peak uh, numbers, and then you, you, you better have uh, you know, better advantages and better utilization yeah. of your facility. Mm -hmm. So if you are implementing 24-hour economy and some of the huge energy con consumers like uh, uh, the steel mills that use a lot of electricity, you encourage them to, to be uh, the, the cement factories and other things, you encourage them to be working during the, the off-peak periods, yeah. then they will utilize more of the energy, which otherwise you will not be utilizing. Mm -hmm. So it makes good sense to even reduce the tariffs yeah. for them because it inures to the benefits of the oh, whole economy. Yeah. It inures to the benefits of the, uh, the power sector and so on. Mm. So by giving them cheap power, <laughs> which could have gone waste anyway. Anyway, yeah. You are introducing efficiency into the utilization of your energy resources and mm. so on. Meanwhile, National Vice Chairman of the NDC, Professor Joshua Alabi, has been reiterating former President John Bramani Mohamed's proposal of the 24-hour economy to Ghanaians, adding, should the NDC be given the nod, Mr. Bramani Mahama will use the 24-hour economy to address the unemployment challenges that youth in the country are facing. He explains the 24-hour economy will not be about one man working for 24-hour but a shift system that will foster economic opportunities in areas including agro-processing, pharmaceutical, the manufacturing and construction sectors. Professor Joshua Labi spoke on behalf of former President John Dramani Mahama at the 60th anniversary of the St. Francis Xavier Jr. Seminary in Wa. Join his Upper West Regional Correspondent, Rafik Salam, reports. The 60th anniversary of the St. Francis Xavier Jr. Seminary was held on the team Xavier at 60, the role of stakeholders in keeping the light of excellence signing. Vice Chairman and 2020 Campaign Manager of the National Democratic Congress, Professor Joseph Alabi, reading a speech on behalf of former President John Dramani Mahama, commended the Catholic Church for the establishment of the St. Francis Xavier Junior Seminary, which has produced maids of personalities working in various spheres of the country's development. He then talked about his focus for the youth aimed at addressing the unemployment challenges, what is my childhood 24-hour economy. Very soon, you will be completing and you will be entering into the world of work, where it is believed the young ones don't have food. And you cannot put the blame anywhere by putting the blame on the politicians. His Excellency John Dramani Mama on his part 
will be focusing more on the youth and aims to address the unemployment problem through the 24-hour economy. So I assure you, there is hope. The 24-hour economy is not about one man working for 24 hours. It is an economic model fostering productivity and creating job opportunities in areas like agro-processing, pharmaceuticals, manufacturing, construction, sanitation, waste management, extractive industry, among a few. It is a system where there will be three shifts of eight hours. So that is going to create productivity and is going to create employment for the youth. Our power sugar minister, Dr. Hafiz Bin Sali, speaking on behalf of President Ikufadu, spoke of the unwavering commitment of the government to support educational institutions in the country. St. Francis Xavier Junior Seminary has not been excluded from the government's support framework through collaborative efforts between the Ministry of Education and the Regional Directorate of Education. We have ensured that these institutions receive the necessary resources, infrastructural improvement, and access to academic facilities. Additionally, initiatives such as teacher training programs and curriculum enhancement have been extended to further elevate the education standards. Beyond this esteemed institution, the government's commitment to education spans the nation's senior high schools and technical and vocational training institutions. We aim to equip our youth with skills, knowledge, and competences needed to thrive in an ever, ever evolving world. Rector of the St. Francis Xavier Junior Seminary, Reverend Father Nader B. Martin stated that the Manor Seminary was established in 1963 to raise up Christian gentlemen to serve the church in Madagana and beyond. Since its establishment, about 1,500 students have completed the seminary. The rest are now in the human force that are working in various fields of the country's development and beyond. Reverend Father Nader has ever rolled out some challenges that the junior seminarians are facing. Teachers are on secondment to the school. All other staff, apart from the nurses, are paid by the management of the school. The school has 10 bungalows for the teaching staff, religious sisters, and some nurses on campus. Our staff strength stands at 22 as against 10 bungalows that the school has, and this number is woefully inadequate. And wherever we can get the support to continue to provide accommodation for our uh, teaching and non-teaching staff, will be very much welcome. Paramount Chief of the Laura Traditional Area, Napo Wede Kapo the Third, chair the function. He calls on stakeholders with introspection and deep reflection to marshal our efforts, hope to keep the light of excellence lit by the founding fathers burning and brighter. This glimmer of light of excellence lit by our forefathers has been kept bright all these years by the effort, dedication, and commitment of the masters, students, and parents over the years. Away from the NDC now to the PNC because the General Secretary of the People's National Convention, Janet Nabla, says unless the country accepts that corruption permeates the entire Ghanaian society, the fight will not be won. Speaking to Joy News after a National Executive Committee meeting of the party, 
The PNC chief um, scribe argued that the pe uh, pretense that only politicians are corrupt is the reason why corruption is still so endemic in the country. Because uh, polit politicians want to win power, they will lie about how they should fight corruption. To fight corruption, a political party, politicians are less than 1% of Ghana's population and cannot be the cause of corruption in Ghana. It is the Ghanaian who is corrupt. Ghanaians are corrupt. So for us to be able to eradicate corruption out of our fibers, then we have to be truthful. Our religious bodies are aware that their congregants are corrupt. You go into the mosque, they know that their members are corrupt. You go into schools, teachers are not teaching children how to morally, to, 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 like, to hold moral uh, values dear. They, they are not teaching those things. At the end of the day, the person grows up to become a corrupt person, and then it's the Ghanaian that they pick as a minister who becomes corrupt or as a, an MP and those things. So when you say the minister is corrupt, did the minister fall from the skies to become a corrupt person? No, he was first a Ghanaian. So um, for us to be able to eradicate corruption out of this uh, Ghana, Politicians who think that they can uh, write on the, by, by, by lying to uh, these Ghanaians to be able to vote for them must be truthful. Any uh, politician in uh, uh, election 2024 who will not call it, call a uh, corruption, tag Ghanaian to corruption and try to tag a particular group of people is not the man that Ghanaians should be voting for. We should have politicians who will come out to tell us that they will let our schools, our parents is even part of it. Because when you have a child and you don't teach the, pers uh, the child about moral values, the child will grow up to end up being corrupt. So uh, all these institutions are supposed to be strengthened. Our teachers must be encouraged to be able to, 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 to teach children to abhor like, corruption. Janice Nabla says the party remains resolute in its quest to capture political power in the 2024 elections as the party believes it is the only political party with the capacity to break the duopoly of the NDC and the NPP. We think that uh, the PNC is the only political party in Ghana that can be able to bring out solutions for Ghanaians. If you look at uh, our gov the governance of Ghana, it has always been the MPP and the NDC. These are the two political parties that are in parliament. I've told people, and I'm saying it again, there is no way you can go and vote for MPP or NDC and say you want change. Because the two political parties now are those that are ruling this country. In fact, they are in parliament, they are in charge of our organizations, our institutions, they monitor everything. So if uh, things are not working well, it is as a result of the MPP and the NDC. So it will pain me that a Ghanaian will think that maybe uh, any of them is in, is in our opposition. They are not in opposition. The only political party that is in opposition is the People's National Convention. We are in opposition. Even in opposition, uh, we come out with our policies so that Ghanaians can um, to help salvage this country. Uh, we have a lot of people who say that they don't want to bring their policies out so that others will steal them. If PNC, we did not bring the policy of national health insurance, will Ghanaians now be enjoying? If we say that we will keep quiet until we come to power, we won't come out with policies. Ministry of Women and Children Affairs, now Ministry of Gender. We won't have been having that ministry. ministry. Zongo Pete after portrayal. I didn't see it coming. Life can be so unpredictable. After losing my dad, it made me think about my family if something were to happen to me. The mortgage, car payments, and all the other bills. Even things like our annual summer vacation would be out of reach. I had heard about life insurance through Ethos and how easy it was to get coverage. They were right. I knew it was time to stop putting it off and get life insurance right now. I got on my computer and went to ethoslife.com. In just 10 minutes, I was covered. And boom, family protected. Thanks to Ethos, my family won't have to worry about the bills if the unpredictable happens to me. Ethos, fast and easy online term life insurance. Up to $2 million in coverage with no medical exam. Some policies as low as a dollar a day. Answer a few health questions and get your free quote at ethoslife.com slash audio. That's E-T-H-O-S life dot com slash audio. For the ones who get it done, the most important part is the one you need now. And the best partner is the one who can deliver. That's why millions of maintenance and repair pros trust Granger, Because we have professional-grade supplies for every industry, even hard-to-find products. 
and we have same-day pickup and next-day delivery on most orders. But most importantly, we have an unwavering commitment to help keep you up and running. Call, clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. When you need zucchini or deli ham, Instacart shoppers lend a hand. Add a little life to your cart. And if you want your bananas green, honey, it ain't no thing. Add a little life to your cart. Instacart helps get your groceries. Your first three deliveries are free. Download Instacart. Add life to cart. Terms apply. Hurry into the Wrap Up the Year sales event at your local Ram dealer for great deals on the trucks that give you all the power you need and all the luxury you could ask for. Now get 10% below MSRP for an average of 6219 under MSRP on the purchase of a 2023 Ram 1500 Bighorn Crew Cab. Not compatible with lease offers or with any other consumer incentive offers. 6219 average based on 10% below average MSRP from all 2023 Ram 1500 Bighorn Crew Cab models in dealer stock. Residency restrictions apply. Take retail delivery from dealer stock by 1224. Wendy's Peppermint Frosty and Frosty Cream Cold Brew make the perfect gift for anyone in your life. Especially for you. Yeah, this year you're sitting on your own lap and getting yourself what you want. Finally. And now every day this season, unlock 20% off your total when you get any small, medium, or large Frosty in the Wendy's app. So order something from your own wish list this year. Limited time only. Participating U.S. Wendy's with app offer and registration. Applies to menu items only. Taxes and fees excluded. Communities were those who first said we want to create Ministry of Women and Zongo Communities. Now we have a Ministry of Zongo or something communities. And then we talk about get fund. We talk about school feeding and the rest. So uh, the PNC is a political party that is not selfish. We are not selfish in our policies. On one of our headline stories, Speaker of Parliament Alban Bagwen says he will lock the doors to the Chamber of Parliament at 10 a.m. from next year because of late start of seatings due to lateness from MPs. Addressing members in Parliament, the Speaker argued that it is not right that he has to come and wait for MPs. Alban Bagwen says if MPs do not want him to enforce this new decision, then they must agree to start seatings at 2 p.m. or 4 p.m. You can see that we are having challenges with early attendance. Now, if it is the pleasure of members to always start at 10, then we have to put additional measures in place. You all know that the chief doesn't go to sit to wait for his subjects. Nowhere in any parliament in the world will the speaker always go and sit and wait for members of parliament to come in. It doesn't happen anywhere in the world. So please, from the first meeting of the fourth session of the fourth parliament, of, sorry, the eighth parliament of the fourth republic at 10 a.m. Who you say 10 in the phone? The doors will be locked. It will take some time before the doors are opened. Not that it will be opened, but it will take some time. If we are not able to comply with it, then please let's all agree that we we'll always start sitting in the afternoon from 2 or 4. The committees will have the meetings in the morning. Reports will be ready for us to consider in the afternoon. And then by the time we, we adjourn, at 8 p.m., the traffic situation might be improved. So the two caucuses, either you have joined caucuses meeting or at your own level, you discuss these things and come back with proposals. If not, these are the measures that I want to put in place, which will take effect from next meeting. 
More from Parliament because MP for Dom Kwabinya, Sarah Adjwasafo, is urging Parliament to speedily pass the Affirmative Action Bill due to its major significance. The bill, which seeks to promote women's participation and remove the historical low representation of women in all policy making spaces, has become a conditionality in Ghana's deal with the International Monetary Fund. The former Gender Minister says while Parliament must pass the bill expeditiously, it must do a thorough job so the law can stand the test of time. I see here listed the Affirmative Action Bill. And on page 14, again, it's listed for um, consideration. This, on page 10, it's for um, second reading, and on page 14, it's for consideration. Mr. Speaker, you would agree with me that the Affirmative Action Bill, it's a very important bill that has been coming out of, in and out of this house. And I strongly believe that as women, we, we, we are very much interested in this bill. The issue I have with the listings on the business statement is the timing where we find these bills being um, considered. Budget statement has been presented by the finance minister. We are done with the debate and consideration of the policy, but we're going to go into committees and start discussing and uh, dissecting the estimates. I am a bit worried that around the same time we have such an important bill. Mr. Speaker, I know you've been a strong advocate and a promoter of this bill as well. So I just want to draw the majority leader's attention to the fact that it's very important. We want to see it passed, but we want to see it go through the proper considerations with the numbers that we need in the House, so that at the end of the day, it will be a collective uh, bill that has been considered and taken through the various stages of considerations in this House. Away from Parliament, the Honorary Vice President of Imani Africa, Bryce Simon, says has challenged the Lands and Natural Resources Minister, Samuel Abujinapo, to substantiate his claim that the 10% lithium royalties rate signed by Ghana is the best globally. Bryce Simon emphasized that there have been times in Ghana um, where Ghana's history when the government had more than 50% state participation in contrast to the current 19% state participation in the agreement with Barari DV Ghana Limited. The minister, um, you know, makes claims that are just simply not true, and with all due respect, um, he makes claims that this is the best deal ever, and he suggests that the fiscal terms are the most generous, and that is debatable in the sense that if you think about the, um, the dynamics that are confronting us, the, 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 the fiscal terms that have been presented in the agreement that we are all aware of. Yes, the 10% seems high because in recent times we've been signing agreements that um, some argue have shortchanged us, and the 13% um, um, free, carry, free carry interest is interesting. But the truth of the matter is that if you take the whole historic span of our mining industry in this country, those terms are not that generous because we can say that in the 70s, Ghana automatically had a 55% participation rate. You couldn't do mining in Ghana unless the state owns 55%. So are we comparing our current fiscal deal, uh, fiscal um, uh, yield on lithium to that era? Or we are having an arbitrary period of, say, from 1990 onwards, or what are we doing? So in, in short, there have been periods in our country when we had way more. Whether or not that was a good thing, of course, it's another debate, because the argument was that by the end of uh, the 1980s, we declined from 33 gold mines to about four gold mines because some argued that the state was too dominant and private investment was not coming in. So private technology, private in, uh, management capacity, etc., uh, had been shut out. That is a separate argument. But to argue that this is the best in terms of the generosity of the terms is just not true because we have a, a history in this country where in the 70s, the Champion government said 55% of all minerals belong to the state. How is your 13% or even if you increase it to 19% or even if you do go further to 29% as the minister is saying might be the case, how does that compare? 
is urging Parliament to scrutinize the deal, describing the agreement as too simplistic, especially given the uncertainties in the demand for lithium. Given the uncertainties, our strongest argument is that the government needs to approach this from a real options point of view. What that simply means is that instead of this very simple agreement that they've done, in some cases there is a benefit of simplicity. But this, in this case, we don't think so. We think there has to be more options in the agreement in, in some of the uh, respects. We've talked already about royalty. When the pretty margin changes, we think the royalty should be, uh, should be variable. We think even in the case of equity, the way that it's size the equity is not the way they've done it now, which is they've done it in, two, uh, in a two-pronged manner. For the government, it's a first kind of thing, and we say in the future we may negotiate for more. For MIF, which is a, the Sovereign Wealth Fund, if I allow them to use warrants, which is a kind of option. So what it means is that they have the, the, up, they have the right but not the obligation to buy more if the price improves. But there are other options that we can use, and why not use it for the state too? Because MIF, given the fact that they can you know, easily exit their position, given the fact that they are Sovereign Wealth Fund, as opposed to the state, where we are lot more, the, the regimen is much more stricter. We are not too happy that the state is not using options, not using some of the warrants. So not just warrants to exercise when the strike prices at a certain level. We want warrants that do other things as well. Uh, and we think that the agreement is, is too simplistic, given the uncertainties in lithium. If you're doing gold, we wouldn't have a problem. But lithium, a lot of crazy things are going on. For one, for one thing, there, there is a lot of aggressive push. There's a massive aggressive and massive and aggressive push to look for alternatives to lithium-based batteries. Uh, laboratories all over the world, some of them funded to the tune of billions of dollars, are experimenting with all manner of li uh, battery technologies. In a time they come when lithium ion batteries are not the big deal in, in electric vehicles possible. We don't know that. There's a recycling boom where after you use the electric ba ba battery, remember that the batteries uh, for NMC, for instance, just four years. After four years, it, it, the charging ratio drops to as low as 20%, and people just simply change it. So when you throw away the battery, Nowadays, people are recycling the lithium, and that boom is really increasing. A time they come when we are getting more lithium from the discarded batteries that we are mining afresh. And we don't know yet. But all of those things, plus, of course, the thing that everybody is talking about, the massive crash in prices. Prices have dropped from a high of about eight to $1,000 uh, a ton for lithium um, carbonate and, and hydroxide to something like $16,500 uh, this month. So that's a massive drop in, in value. So we don't really know what is happening with this lithium thing. That therefore requires that we're very careful in the way we, we structure the agreement to take into account the certainty. And to some other stories, the chief executive officer of the University of Ghana Medical Center, Dr. Kwame, uh, Kwame Enim Buama, is urging young people to be mindful of their lifestyle choices. According to him, lifestyle choices such as drinking and smoking may lead to the damage of important organs like the liver and the kidney. His comment follows an increase in diabetes and hypertension cases among young people in the country. He spoke to join us at a benefit concert by the hospital to raise an amount of $50 million for the construction of clinical trials unit. More in this report. According to the World Health Organization, non-communicable diseases kill 41 million people each year. That is 74% of all deaths globally. It is said each year, 17 million people die from NCDs before the age of 70, while 86% of these premature deaths are estimated to occur in low- and middle-income countries. In Ghana, the situation is no different, with an increasing number of diabetes cases and hypertension recorded among young adults. CEO of the University of Ghana Medical Center, Dr. Kwame Enimboama, is cautioning young people to be mindful of these lifestyle diseases. Go for regular checkups. Whether you are sick or not, you need to visit the hospital. And these days, we are seeing hypertension and diabetes in younger age groups. So especially once you hit, you know, 20, 30 going, definitely after 40, every year you need to have your annual uh, checkup done. And then if there is something that is detected, you take, you know, steps to correct. Aside the healthy lifestyle of uh, stopping to smoke, reduce alcohol intake, reduce salt intake. You shouldn't say that as for you, you like salt, so when they finish cooking, you add salt. So no other salt, okay? And then let's be ambulant, keep our weights down, do some exercises, and live a stress-free life. Enjoy yourself.
don't covet what is not yours. Dr. Buama believes government should enroll the treatment of renal dialysis patients onto the National Health Insurance Scheme. But in terms of the National Health Insurance, I mean, if they are able to cover for the dialysis, then that would be very good. And so we all need to find a way of funding it and to help patients who suffer from this to really benefit. And the end point really of dialysis is also to have renal or kidney transplant. So again, uh, at UGMC, we are trying to improve or we've started doing renal transplant. So we are hoping that eventually we should become a center of excellence with that and be able to do more so that patients who have renal uh, diseases and stage will not just be on dialysis, but they'll be on dialysis with the hope that they're going to have renal or kidney transplant. The University of Ghana Medical Center was opened in 2017. The facility is an ultramodern thousand-bed medical center offering world-class health services, medical training, and research. The benefit concert organized by the hospital as part of its fifth anniversary is to raise an amount of $50 million to put up an ultramodern clinic trials unit for the hospital. Board member of UGMC set a J bar called on Ghanaians to support the initiative. There's a need for us to recognize we have something good here. Secondly, what we have here, we can also contribute to make it better. We need other equipment and other machinery that we might not have. But we cannot put all the burden on government. We think as individuals, we should be able to help. People are able to travel from here to India, South Africa and other places, spending millions or thousands of dollars. But you can contribute 1,000 cities, 100 cities, 500 cities. And that will give us what we need for us to be able to satisfy people. Pete after portrayal. I didn't see it coming. Life can be so unpredictable. After losing my dad, it made me think about my family if something were to happen to me. The mortgage, car payments, and all the other bills. Even things like our annual summer vacation would be out of reach. I had heard about life insurance through Ethos and how easy it was to get coverage. They were right. I knew it was time to stop putting it off and get life insurance right now. I got on my computer and went to ethoslife.com. In just 10 minutes, I was covered. And boom, family protected. Thanks to Ethos, my family won't have to worry about the bills if the unpredictable happens to me. Ethos, fast and easy online term life insurance. Up to $2 million in coverage with no medical exam. Some policies as low as a dollar a day. Answer a few health questions and get your free quote at ethoslife.com slash audio. That's E-T-H-O-S life dot com slash audio. Hurry into the wrap-up-the-year sales event at your local Ram dealer for great deals on the trucks that give you all the power you need and all the luxury you could ask for. Now get 10% below MSRP for an average of $6,219 under MSRP on the purchase of a 2023 Ram 1500 Bighorn Crew Cab. Not compatible with lease offers or with any other consumer incentive offers. $6,219 average based on 10% below average MSRP from all 2023 Ram 1500 Bighorn Crew Cab models in dealer stock. Residency restrictions apply. Take retail delivery from dealer stock by 1224. Wendy's Peppermint Frosty and Frosty Cream Cold Brew make the perfect gift for anyone in your life. Especially for you. Yeah, this year you're sitting on your own lap and getting yourself what you want. Finally. And now every day this season, unlock 20% off your total when you get any small, medium, or large Frosty in the Wendy's app. So order something from your own wish list this year. Limited time only. Participating U.S. Wendy's with app offer and registration. Applies to menu items only. Taxes and fees excluded. In Jesus' name. (laughs) Over the course of this year's five days December to Remember conference at the House of Miracles Ministries, 500 packs of cooked food will be shared, 100 each day. Hundreds will also go home with uncooked rice and bottles of cooking oil. Persons with disability will receive undisclosed amounts to help with their upkeep. Now, the National Health Insurance Authority is appealing to the various service providers to desist from charging their clients when the services rendered are covered under the NHI Central. Now, the Central Regional Director of the Authority, Fred Apia, explains the practice is eroding the confidence of their clients in the system and threatens the progress being made. Mr. Uh, Frederick Apia was uh, engaging the media as part of the NHIA's 20th anniversary celebration. There is more in this report. 
This call for attention to adolescent health comes as part of the Adolescent Health Advocacy Week, during which health professionals focus on various aspects of adolescent world. We sincerely apologize for that. We are taking a breather. We'll be right back with more. Please stay. The Evergreen Rattray Park with your superstation, Love 99.5 FM. Where are my bubbly little kids? It's the Love FM Christmas Kids Party! It's party and fun time for all the kids as we enjoy and make merry this Christmas. So, parents, come with all the kids and let's have fun! West school is good in these activities. Dancing, singing, choreography, picnic, horse race, lime and spoon. Mm-hmm. Register your school or Sunday school by calling 0245-594425. Says Santa Claus alongside Mickey Mouse will be there with loads of kids. Remember, there will be bouncy castles, electric train, chuku chaka chuku chaka trampoline, horse race, a stationary aeroplane. TV games and many more to play with. Face painting too dead a corner there somewhere. Come, let's have absolute fun this Christmas at the Love FM S Market Party. Rich is 10 Ghana City State. Saturday, 23rd of December 2023. 9 a.m. sharp. S Market Party. Welcome back to Joy Newsroom. The Ghana Health Service is calling for the prioritization of the health and well-being of adolescent girls. Speaking at this year's Adolescent Health Advocacy Week in Cape Coast, Central Regional Director of Health Services, Dr. Marion Okowusu, explained that the adolescent stage of girls represents a critical phase of their lives that could make or break them in future. Dr. Klo um, Wusu says it is important to increase interventions in these areas to ensure the healthy development of the adolescent girl, which would help them reach their full potential. This call for attention to adolescent health comes as part of the Adolescent Health Advocacy Week, during which health professionals focus on various aspects of adolescent well-being. Key areas include reproductive health, nutrition and mental health, all of which are crucial for the holistic development of adolescents. Central Regional Director of Health, Dr. Marion Oku Owusu says the initiative aims at prioritizing access to health services for adolescents, addressing both financial considerations and quality of care provided. Wherever we are, let's make the time for our adolescents. They need to hear from us. They see us and they want to be like us. But most of them are ill-informed because of peer pressure, and other mates they hear from the communities, from social media, including the television, the, their mobile phones that they use to access other social media platforms. And so we should make the time for them to talk to them about the issues that bother them. And they, when they also approach us with their issues, this week has been set aside to give an extra attention to adolescent health issues. And this includes their reproductive health, their nutrition issues, their mental health, to mention a few. So for the central region, with that data analysis, you can see clearly that there's an improvement in the trend of access to products, family planning products, by adolescents, that is adolescents that are due. 
the age. Some of the adolescents are 18 years and 19 years, and then they can access the products because of the age brackets. Dr. Marion Oko, who says, urging the public to support these efforts and collectively contribute to nurturing a generation of healthy and empowered adolescent girls. She says encouraging the enrollment of adolescents on the National Health Insurance Scheme is a key step in ensuring comprehensive health coverage. When we talk about access, it's not just working to the facility, but also financial access. And so the enrollment of adolescents on the National Health Insurance is a priority for us as a health service in schools. So for the school enrollment, we ensure that once you... You, you receive your admission to come to school, you should make sure that your NHIS card is valid so that when you fall sick, you can use a valid card to access free health care for yourself. In terms of the availability of the service itself, the school clinics are now functional and the health services has assigned school nurses to support in the provision of services for the schools. And the schools have also been linked up to some of the hospitals so that when they have severe emergencies, they can refer them to the bigger hospitals. Program specialist of the Adolescent and Youth Development of the UFPA, Adjua Yenyi, called for a huge investment in adolescent health. Um, because adolescent health is part of the general population, it is normally integrated as mainstream population. But what we need to understand is we need to make a conscious effort to, um, to, to invest in young people's health, adolescents and youth. Because when we invest in their health now, we will begin to see the benefits in years to come. All the health issues we are addressing, the teenage pregnancy, um, all the gender-based violence, STIs, diabetes, anything that has to do with health. When we invest in young people now, we will find out that in years to come, the government does not need to put so much money into caring ailments and investing in the health sector. The theme for this year's event is Every Adolescent Counts, Accessible Health Care for All. Away from that, the Northern Electricity Distribution Company, NETCO, has reconnected power supply to a chrome and chrome after the community experienced two weeks of total blackout after some unidentified members of the community tempered with a transformer in the area. Techiman Area Manager for NETCO, John Tayari, who was speaking at a meeting with opinion leaders from the community, admonished power users to desist from tempering with faulty power lines to save lives and properties. Anas Sabit filed this report. The Akruma community in the Kintampa South District were taken off the national grid after some unidentified members of the community embarked on activities that are capable of damaging net coast transformers and transmission lines. Tishman Area Manager for the Northern Electricity Distribution Company, John Tyree, says the activities of the people beyond causing damage to the transmission lines also pose as a danger to the lives of the people of the community. We got a complaint that there was a light off in the uh, Akuma Chrome. Uh, our team put themselves together to get to Akuma Chrome, only to realize that they had gotten an electrician to fuse the transformer back. And the transformer fuses, the, they use cable to just tie them in a manner that it would be difficult for them to you know, blue in case of any eventuality. So we detected that that was dangerous to the health of the transformer and then even for the people of the community. Netco's decision to disconnect power to the community is to, amongst other things, make the community provide the persons involved as well as prevent future occurrences. Mr. John Tyree admonished the people to avoid tampering with transmission lines and report to NETCO for immediate actions to be taken. We took away the fuses and asked that the community should get the person who fused the transformer before we could restore supply. So the fact that the fuse is gone off doesn't mean you should just go and fuse it back. So when they go off, communities should have the patience, get back to us and let us do our work and do it professionally. That is safer. The people of the community through the district chief executive reported to the PURC whose intervention called for a meeting between NETCO and the opinion leaders of the community. District chief executive for Kintampo South, Opokunyame, promised to engage the people of the district on the hazards associated with tampering with transmission lines of NETCO. 
we learn from our mistakes. So what has happened, we must take a clue from it. We must learn some lesson from what has happened at Akroma. So I'll add it to my message. Whenever I engage uh, the communities, I will just advise them on this uh, issue, particular issue, how they should protect their properties, especially when it comes to power outrages, when the power goes off. Regional manager of the Public Utilities Regulatory Commission, Patrick Entry, whose mediation called for a meeting between NETCO and the community, says there is a need for an intensive education on the consequences of such actions that lead to damaging properties belonging to utility companies. I think uh, education and community engagement must be stepped up a bit. It must be intensified. I think with the assumption that people know what they are supposed to do with regards to electricity and power, um, we might get it wrong. So we need to engage the community a lot. We need to engage uh, community leaders, of course, on the consequence of some of these actions. So I think that there's, there's more room for improvement. We shall always make sure that our major stakeholders also are engaged at every point in time to make sure that some of these issues become a thing of the past. The community, after signing a bond of good behavior, promised to abide by the content of the bond and prompt NETCO whenever they have issues with their electricity lines. Anna Sabit, Joy News, Tichima. To some business story, the Director of Crop Services at the Ministry of Food and Agriculture, Dr. Solomon Janansa, is advising the public to venture into home gardening to contribute to food production. According to him, this would help reduce reliance on industrial agriculture. He was speaking at the launch of the Home Gardening Initiative by Solidaridad Ghana. The Home Gardening Initiative by Solidaridad Ghana is designed to address critical issues related to food security and nutrition. The launch of the initiative was themed working together to grow safe and nutritious foods. Director of Crop Services at the Ministry of Food and Agriculture, Dr. Solomon Jan Ansa, said investing in home gardening could help reduce reliance on industrial farming. So long as the Ghanaian population is expected to increase over the years, there will be a continuous need to increase food production and buffer stocks to meet the growing demand and efficiently cope with volatilities in food production and prices. There is a need to pay attention towards home gardens as a strategy to also enhance household food security and nutrition and to avert farming. It provides families with access to fresh, nutri nutritious produce reducing their reliance on expensive and often unhealthy processed foods. By growing your own food, individuals and communities reduce their reliance on industrial agriculture and often comes, that often comes with a heavy environmental footprint. Country Director of Solidaridad Ghana, Bosman Owusu, explains the initiative and its intended impact. Home gardening initiative is to encourage as many urban households as possible to grow their own vegetables. And the reason is simple. Growing your own vegetables ensures that you produce it to the best of um, hygienic standards. So you use good quality water to water it and you guarantee that whatever you are eating is safe. And it also helps you to apply organic... Uh, Paid after portrayal. I didn't see it coming. Life can be so unpredictable. After losing my dad, it made me think about my family if something were to happen to me. The mortgage, car payments, and all the other bills. Even things like our annual summer vacation would be out of reach. I had heard about life insurance through Ethos and how easy it was to get coverage. They were right. I knew it was time to stop putting it off and get life insurance right now. I got on my computer and went to ethoslife.com. In just 10 minutes, I was covered. And boom, family protected. 
Thanks to Ethos, my family won't have to worry about the bills if the unpredictable happens to me. Ethos, fast and easy online term life insurance. Up to $2 million in coverage with no medical exam. Some policies as low as a dollar a day. Answer a few health questions and get your free quote at ethoslife.com slash audio. That's E-T-H-O-S life dot com slash audio. Hurry into the wrap up the year sales event at your local Ram dealer for great deals on the trucks that give you all the power you need and all the luxury you could ask for. Now get 10% below MSRP for an average of 6219 under MSRP on the purchase of a 2023 Ram 1500 Bighorn Crew Cab. Not compatible with lease offers or with any other consumer incentive offers. 6219 average based on 10% below average MSRP from all 2023 Ram 1500 Bighorn Crew Cab models in dealer stock. Residency restrictions apply. Take retail delivery from dealer stock by 1224. Wendy's Peppermint Frosty and Frosty Cream Cold Brew make the perfect gift for anyone in your life. Especially for you. Yeah, this year you're sitting on your own lap and getting yourself what you want. Finally. And now every day this season, unlock 20% off your total when you get any small, medium, or large Frosty in the Wendy's app. So order something from your own wish list this year. Limited time only. Participating U.S. Wendy's with app offer and registration. Applies to menu items only. Taxes and fees excluded. Manure to support the growth of the vegetables. And what that also means is that you avoid consuming pesticides of high doses, which could also affect your health. Now, now, apart from these values or benefits from growing your own vegetables, we also know that there are many who grow and actually receive some cash support from that. So they may grow uh, more, and we have people who are willing to buy your excess vegetables. The public was also advised to adopt good agricultural practices to reduce losses. Equibank Ghana PLC says it will expand its investment for businesses across the country and beyond. The bank maintained that it remains committed to cushion the operations of these businesses to contribute to the economic growth and national development. Acting Managing Director Joanna Mensah said the bank will embark on various transformational agenda for businesses in 2024. She was speaking at the Ecobank Chinese Forum. The forum facilitated the trading and investment activities of the bank's key customers and the public and also provided opportunity for policymakers and key agents for a genuine and informed debate that sought to discover new ways of improving trade between the bank and Chinese business. Joanna Mains are called for more collaboration. By surmounting the challenges of language and cultural barriers, this initiative was fostered across other Ecobank affiliates in various African countries, such as Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Liberia, Benin, Cote d'Ivoire, Sierra Leone, Cape Verde, Guinea, Chad, amongst others. And indeed, we'll be very glad to also hold a forum, including all of these countries, so that we can further collaborate and develop business amongst Chinese partners in these other countries. Ecobank's steadfast support to Chinese business community holds paramount importance. We have financed major projects such as Judiciary Service 34 Room Court Complex, the Pokwasi Project, Tema Harbor Expansion, N1 Road, Pong Community 26, Affordable Housing, Makola Shopping Mall, amongst others. President of the Ghana China Chamber of Commerce, Tan Hong, said the Chinese businesses will continue to be heavy in investment for technology. New trends in business help companies reduce expenses, especially in traditional business, and therefore attract many more customers. There are various emerging trends, but I would like to dive into the role of emerging technology in fostering economic growth. We can see how quickly and effectively technology has opened the door. And that's it for joining this room. I am Pius Kujubaka. For more stories, do log on to myjoyonline.com. Always a joy serving you. The law is next with Samson Ladi and Yenini. Do enjoy.